Welcome to PDC Spotlight. I'm Ann Mangan with the Portland Development Commission. Today we're at the Portland Incubator Experiment, also known as PI, housed at Wyden and Kennedy headquarters in Portland's Pearl District. This beautiful space houses one of the world's top advertising agencies, which recently launched PI, an experimental collaboration with tech entrepreneurs to incubate and accelerate startups. We'll talk later on with Rick Tarosi, general manager of PI and writer of the popular high-tech blog, Silicon Florist. But first we'll meet Patrick Quinton, executive director of the Portland Development Commission and a champion of PDC's work to build and support a strong entrepreneurial community here in Portland. The central theme of the City of Portland's economic development strategy is the importance of innovation and entrepreneurship in driving job creation and economic growth in the region. We're here with Patrick Quinton, Executive Director of the Portland Development Commission, who's been very involved in PDC's work with the startup community. Patrick, what's so important about having successful startups here in Portland? Well, startups are the future of our economy here in Portland. Startups are the next generation job creators, they're the next generation uh, creators of wealth and and they'll, they'll grow incomes and they'll produce the talent that will, that will drive our economy for years to come. And what's the plan right now? What kind of projects and programs do we have underway? Who are we working with? Well, as you know, Ann, we've, we've, uh, uh, we helped start the Portland Seed Fund and, and that's, that uh, has gotten off to a great success. Uh, over $2 million in the fund. They've, they've just uh, graduated their first eight companies, an exciting group of companies. We also invested a million and a half in the Portland State Business Accelerator to help grow the life sciences industry. So we're, we're quite happy with, with our initial successes. Uh, over the next year, what you'll see is we'll uh, make an additional investment in the Portland Seed Fund. We're going to help uh, uh, turn the Central East Side, uh, or what we like to call Produce Row, into a hub of, of startups and entrepreneurial activity. And we're going to be continuing to work with our university partners uh, to help them grow their research and commercialization capabilities. I've heard a little something about Portland 100. Can you talk about that at all? Yeah, Portland 100 is, is a program that, uh, that's in the early stages right now. And what we're trying to do is figure out how to scale the most promising companies in the region so that in addition to having a broad base of startups, we might help grow the next, the next Google or Microsoft right here in Portland. Great. So after these initial investments and successes in terms of Portland Seed Fund and others, what else is happening? What kind of successes are you seeing and what's the payoff? Well, we're seeing a lot of, a lot of new companies uh, either start up here or move here. A, a company like Bank Simple is a great example of a company, startup company that started in New York but moved here to Portland because of our startup environment. We're seeing great companies like Puppet Labs and Urban Airship uh, reach the next level of growth and, and, and that's been fueled in large part by an influx of venture capital to the region and our, our venture capital investments have reached unprecedented levels here in the region. What are you most looking forward to as far as the entrepreneurship program goes for PDC? I'm looking forward to, uh, to long-term successes, companies that all of us can look back on five or ten years from now and, and say we, we were there when these companies started and, and we've seen them grow into, into uh, important players in the Portland economy. Very cool. Well, thanks so much for your insights. Thank you. If you want to follow what's happening with the Portland Seed Fund, PDC's entrepreneurship support and business development programs, or anything else happening at the PDC, visit our website at pdc.us. Portland's entrepreneurs run the gamut, from mobile app developers to craft distillers to outdoor enthusiasts. Let's meet a few of these idea and job generators in this next video story. You've got a community that really understands and gets behind new businesses. Uh, and it's not just it's just it's not just government or or, or supporting business or things like that. It, it it's it's kind of fun to say that you're starting up a business here in Portland. Where other communities that's that's kind of oh well, gee why are you doing why don't you get a regular job? I mean that seems to resonate more with the Portland psyche. I would think the creativity around here, the kind of kind of get it done on your own way we are in Portland. We just kind of go make stuff, and I think that's that's essentially what how we how I started this, 
was just making something. And then it turned into a business once we recognized that people loved it. That we, the, the people out in the world, the public pulled us through to make a business, not the other way around. We didn't even push on anything. Open us to new ideas. I think that's, that's really big. I think, uh, as I was talking before, demographically here, I think people are very accepting of local businesses. I mean, local, local, local is a very big thing. So I think, uh, and to be an experiment, to be try different things. But I definitely think that's uh, that sense of diversity and kind of experimentation, I think, is what uh, you know, draws a lot of people here. They can come here with an idea and more often than not, make it work. There's just something about um, uh, creativity and design in Portland that I think is people hold that in high regard. It's more of a community-based city, I think, that way. And I think that that's, that helps small businesses, that, that whole sense of community. This area is becoming kind of a mecca for mobile and mecca for very good software. It's more affordable, the quality of life is exceptional. People who are really passionate about what they do are here, and a lot of the leaders in, in tech, in, in terms of kind of game-changing um, software, are actually here. Um, so it's a, it's a really good place to, to create a company or to work on an idea. There were lots of factors here that made starting a, a business here just kind of make sense. Uh, one of those that we haven't talked about yet is the kind of resources we have here to be able to, in Portland, to be able to scale up as we're getting new business and new projects. Um, and we talked about the fact that there's lots of clients here and there's creative agencies here, but what we also have here in Portland and a lot of other markets don't have is a huge creative class. So as I'm scaling up, I'm actually, I'm, very readily and easily able to expand my crew with very talented individuals. The film business is extremely competitive. There, um, there are a lot of places you can go and work in the film industry, and you know there's a lot of them base themselves out of LA. So when we can have a, a quality of life in Portland that draws creative resources to Portland, it makes my job a lot easier, and I can hire some amazing staff people. People who can choose to live wherever they want um, and choose here and have the means to both start companies and invest in others who start companies, we want to attract those people, and we do. Portland is a perfect environment with our lifestyle and creative attraction. We are constantly attracting best and brightest creatives to this town. We're perfectly poised to create a new generation of entrepreneurship here right now. Portland's quickly becoming a very positive community for entrepreneurial endeavors. Here's a closer look at the reasons why startup companies are growing right here in Portland. I had been in the real estate brokerage business and was selling older homes and noticed that people were buying and fixing up and selling homes or buying and fixing up and staying in homes and it seemed like there was a real shortage of, of materials, of, of really kind of architecturally appropriate materials they could use for these uh, restorations. And so I, I was able to do research and find an old collection of cast iron molds in upstate New York. And I had those molds uh, restored and put back into production so that we could basically have hand-blown glass. So it wouldn't be a reproduction so much as a you know, genuine article. And so that's always been our goal here, is just to provide really high quality products and services that, uh, that are sort of you know, unmistakable when you receive them that you're, you're never going to be let down. Oh, that's beautiful. And finish, go to patina one more time for 45 seconds. 
You know, I would say that we're kind of an East Coast and West Coast company from a sales perspective. So most of our clients are either on the West Coast or the East Coast. We have two retail stores, one in Portland and one in New York in Tribeca. Um, we have a catalog and a website. You know, there's, there's, um, there's just something about um, uh, creativity and design in Portland that I think is people hold that in high regard. And so there's such a rich community of people that, that just care about old buildings. Um, and so I think that uh, in caring about them, they seem to be really sensitive to how they were gonna be restored. We just made it through the recession. Um, and so we, you know, like, I think like, like a lot of other small companies, we had a, a couple of years where things were very difficult. Um, but we've seemed to have weathered that and now we're kind of back on a growth path. And so, um, you know, we, we're looking pretty optimistically at the future and we're starting to look at what other, what other things can we do? What other sort of product offerings can we make that uh, our customers um, would value? And so um, we're actually, you know, thinking pretty aggressively about the future and, and our growth. These videos are produced by PDC videographer John Cardenas. If you have a story idea for the show, send us an email at video at pdc.us. We're shooting today's show at Wyden and Kennedy in Northwest Portland, home to the largest privately held advertising and communications company in the world. And also, more recently, the home of the Portland incubator experiment, PI for short. We're fortunate to have Rick Tarosi, general manager of Pi, to chat about the program. So Rick, how did Pi get started and how does it work? So about two years ago, Pi started as a co-working space with a bunch of really indiv interesting individuals as well as some interesting startups. There were companies like Bacon and a company called Urban Airship started out of here. And what it was was really just a group of peers who mentored one another, worked in the same space, and, and tried to help each other along as startups. After about a couple years of doing that, we decided that there was something really interesting happening mm -hmm. in here, and we wanted to formalize the program. So now Pi has become an accelerator and incubator for startups with a formal application process, a little bit of funding for the startups that are selected, and then a three-month program that takes them through intensive mentorship to take them from that idea to actually having a product they can go to market with. I've heard something about an online bacon superstore. Mm -hmm. Was that from the last cycle? Yes. So originally, <laughs> one of the original companies in Pi was a company called Bacon. And they, what Bacon did was they sold bacon on the internet, basically. Uh, they were actually so successful that it became difficult for them to keep fulfilling their bacon mm -hmm. orders. And, what <laughs> they, uh, and so they finally decided to sell the company to a competitor. What came out of Bacon was Urban Airship. So oh. the people who were working on Bacon are the same people who built Urban Airship. Um, what other sorts of successes have you seen here and what kind of challenges are coming up? So? Yeah, well, we've been really lucky to have a bunch of really interesting and amazing people come through the space. So even when it was a co-working space, um, Urban Airship, which is one of the, you know, one of the bright young stars mm -hmm. of the Portland startup scene, they just closed another $15 million in funding to bring them up to over $20 million in funding. Uh, there's a company called App fog here in mm -hmm. town which worked out of the space while we were a co-working space and grew from basically one to five people while they were, while they were here before they, they garnered more funding and moved into their own space. Uh, Bank Simple, which just mm -hmm. recently renamed itself Simple, um, <laughs> is uh, also kind of the dev shop started here and then um, they grew to a few people and moved out of the space once they were ready to kind of leave the nest. And uh, now they've decided to headquarter in Portland. So they're becoming a, you know, another one of the bright young stars here in the area. In terms of challenges, I think the, um, you know, it's very interesting to try and build a business in three months, mm -hmm. especially when you're taking it from pure concept to something that an investor wants to put their money into or mm -hmm. that a customer wants to buy. And so our greatest challenge is making sure that our startups are not 
wasting time banging their head against the wall. We have to find mentors that can help them get through their issues more quickly than they would be able to on their own. And our motto for that is, is make new mistakes. So we don't want them repeating mistakes that right. other mentors have made. We want to help them make new mistakes so that they can come back and teach the, the, next, crop, the next crop of startups how to get through that issue. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of businesses do you have on hand right now? We have a wide variety of businesses. They're all across the spectrum. Um, most, it, they're all tech companies. Mm -hmm. Some have a mobile focus. Some are purely web focused. We have one company that's hardware and software. Um, everything from, you know, making a vending machine a better experience to the the next phase of DVDs. So how do you deal with what was DVD content on mm -hmm. an iPad? Um, we've also got folks who are pursuing the health and wellness space. We've got folks who are helping people uh, find ways to, to find a dog sitter the, the mm -hmm. much easier through friends. So we've got a wide variety of, of companies and they're at, they're at all levels too. Some companies came in here, good example is Cloudability, which just launched publicly recently. And they, they were pretty much formed as a team. They were already on the ground running, but they saw Pi as a good opportunity to help move them further faster. Right. And, um, and we've been really lucky to have them here. And then there are some companies that, you know, they were still kind of wrestling with their idea even when they were accepted. So it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. And what do you think Portland gains by having this kind of an asset, this sort of collaboration here locally? What we've really tried to do with Pi is make it something that's relevant to the Portland community. So we, we host events for, for tech, um, you know, we host hackathons and, and speakers, and we try and bring interesting people into town to talk to the tech community in Portland. Um, the other thing I think we do, you know, we do really well is we become that home away from home for people who are visiting mm -hmm. Portland. So, for example, we've been lucky enough to that when Facebook is in town for the open source conference, you know, some of the folks will hang out here and we'll, we'll collaborate with the people working out of the space. Great. Or when we have mentors visiting from out of town, they'll hang out and um, you know, get, to, get to really experience what's going on in Pi firsthand. And I think that really helps. Um, we in Portland believe in our startup community and we feel a great deal there's a great deal of credibility that exists there mm -hmm. but I think we're not very good at, at championing our own cause or blowing our own horn right. so it's nice for them to be able to come and experience that firsthand and then they they again lend credibility to what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. And what kind of feedback have you gotten about this project from the business community or Else. People have been really happy about it. We've been pleasantly surprised with the kind of uptake that, that's been, you know, that people are excited about what we're doing. They want to meet the startups. They mm -hmm. want to be informed about what's going on. I think, you know, at the mentor level as well, we're, we're able to help connect very talented tech and startup mentors with one another in a way that they might not have collaborated before, where they're both helping the same startup, mm -hmm. or they meet each other because they happen to be at a Pi event. So uh, we've been really happy with, um, you know, just the just the outpouring of, of like affection for Pi and what we're trying to accomplish. <laughs> and we're, we're really hoping that we're providing value to the community as well, that this isn't just a one-way thing, that you know, they're getting as much out of Pi as, they, as they're giving mm -hmm. to us as well. What does Wyden and Kennedy get out of this? Wyden and Kennedy get several things out of it. Um, we are sponsored by uh, two brands that work with Wyden and Kennedy, Coca-Cola mm -hmm. and Target, and then Google is also one of our sponsors. So from Wyden and Kennedy's perspective, people at WK get direct access to the startup, mm -hmm. so it's a different environment than the creative environment they're used to. Mm -hmm. It's a creative environment using technology mm -hmm. as opposed to some of the other things they might do. So that's interesting to them, that iterative, speedy right. thing where they're used to working with massive companies that mm -hmm. are dealing with timelines of, we're going to do this in 2014, right. we're going to do this out. in 2020, and the folks here are like, we think we might do this next Tuesday. <laughs> so it's a different, it's a different mm -hmm. dynamic in terms of timelines. That really helps them, I think, the ability to collaborate with their customers in a different way. Mm -hmm. So Coca-Cola and Target and Google all provide mentors for Pi as well. So WK and those folks and the startups all get to collaborate in new and interesting ways. And then I think it's just a really good way for Wyman Kennedy to remain in contact with the community. So many times they're working with 
you know, global and national right. brands, and Portland doesn't have a lot of those beyond the Nikes and Intels. So it really gives them an opportunity to be a more dynamic part of the community. Mm -hmm. And finally, one last question. Um, what have you found most professionally or personally satisfying about being involved with this? Um, I'm, you know, I am really excited to get the chance to come in every day and potentially help a company move forward mm -hmm. faster than they would be able to with mm -hmm. Alpi. I'm really excited about um, when somebody comes to me with a problem and I know 10 mentors immediately who could help them through that problem, making that connection that right. would have otherwise taken them you know, 20 coffee meetings and, and <laughs> you know, tons of emails yes. to make that happen, to really facilitate that there are these amazing people with incredible ideas who are very passionate and removing the roadblocks that enable them to get there. Is, it's just a really rewarding job. Plus, every six months I get a whole new set of shiny objects to deal with. So we graduate <laughs> them, we go recruit another class, and then a whole bunch of new people come in with new and interesting problems and ideas. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a really interesting cycle. Well, lucky you, and yeah. lucky us to have you as a partner. <laughs> to find out more about Pi, visit pipdx.com. And for more about the Portland Development Commission's work with entrepreneurs, visit pdc.us. So that's our show. If you want to learn more about the Portland Development Commission, the entrepreneurial climate here, and our work with local startup businesses, visit our website at pdc.us. I'd like to thank Patrick Quinton for introducing us to PDC's work on behalf of startup businesses and entrepreneurship. Thanks too to Rick Tarosi and everyone at Wyden and Kennedy and Pi for hosting us here today. I'd also like to thank PDC videographer John Cardenas, the Portland Media Training Center, and the Scanner Foundation for producing our show. I'm Ann Mangan with the Portland Development Commission. Thanks for watching. <laughs>